Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It's your brother Usman here once again from the De Inspiration Podcast Show. And welcome to episode 40 of the podcast. And today, alhamdulillah, the reason I have this big smile on my face is because we are joined by a wonderful guest all the way from Zimbabwe, actually, Zimbabwe. Sheikh Ibrahim Mek. Thank you so much for being here. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's my pleasure. And how are you finding Scotland so far? Alhamdulillah, it's beautiful. It's uh, amazing to see the mountains, the rivers. It's just wonderful. Minus the rain and the, the <laughs> wind that we're having so far. We are sorry for the bad weather. But inshallah, next time we were saying off camera that we want to take you maybe on a trip up towards the highlands where it's even more uh, picturesque, subhanAllah. Um, so today we're talking about, inshallah, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but who Allah is and, and understanding his names and his attributes and the power of that uh, for our spirituality inshallah ta'ala and this episode is in collaboration with the Scottish Annual Conference and also sponsored by the Dean over Dunya Islamic Store in Glasgow that's coming up don't go anywhere inshallah This episode is in collaboration with the Scottish Annual Conference. Scottish Annual Conference serves the community through educational Islamic conferences in order to enrich the learning environment of the Scottish community and supports reputable charities for their aid projects. Their journey began back in 2017 with the first conference in Glasgow Central Mosque. Later, with the hard work of their dedicated team and the support from the local community, they formally launched a Scottish Annual Conference in 2018. And welcome back to episode 40 of the De Inspiration podcast show. Sheikh, once again, thank you for being here. So today we're talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in particular, um, we're talking about who Allah is. Now I know that when we're younger, we do learn about Allah and his attributes. But throughout life, I think something which all of us can be a bit guilty of, right, is we focus so much on the outward um, and the external aspects of worship and, and praying and du'a. And although it seems very obvious, we sometimes forget to really pay attention to who we're making du'a to, who we're praying to, and who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And of course, this has effects on um, the strength of our iman and the strength of our worship, right? So today I want to ask you is, just emphasize for us again, the importance of studying who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And also, if you can mention the tour that you're currently on, which is called the Lord of the Worlds, right? Um, and discuss kind of what that's about, inshallah. So basically, when we talk about worship, we talk about salah, zakah, hajj, sawm, you know, and the manner in which you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. But most of the time we ignore the destination who ultimately is Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. We going mm. back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yesterday in my talk I mentioned how, you know, a traveler when he's going somewhere, most of the time what motivates him to go is what's at the destination. Yeah, yeah. So if you don't know what lies at the destination, what's lying in a wait for you, mm. basically seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then how are you going to be motivated to get to him in a manner that he's pleased with you? Mm. So this is the basically what inspires the Lord of the World series. Uh, you know, the idea that we don't talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enough. Mm. Uh, we, we need to talk more about him. Of course. I love you mentioned that the destination, right, is that we have... Uh, the objective which is Allah but the path we sometimes get so focused on the path and it is important of course and it's yes. very important that we observe all the the acts of worship but keeping in the back of your head that there is Jannah and the ultimate goal is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inshallah and Jannah may Allah grant us that I mean so in this tour um, I think what you're doing is you're covering a few names um, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in particular can you tell us what those names are uh, and why you chose them this time around so last night I had uh, a talk in Aberdeen in which we spoke about Al-Hafidh and Al-Hafidh. Now both of the names mean the similar thing which is the protector. So he protects all of knowledge, everything that we have done in our lives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. 
we sometimes tend to forget what we've done just after breakfast. You know, mm. this morning, we don't know what we've done. We've forgotten it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when he brings you on the day of Qiyamah, Allah enumerated it, encompassed it. He knows it and they forgot it. So there are certain good deeds you've done in your life that you've forgotten, but Allah knows. And he'll bring that up on the day of Qiyamah. So this was the focus of my talk initially. And then how that ties in to the fact that because he knows everything, then he is the ultimate protector. Mm. Because he knows from which angle any evil is coming to, to you, you know. And this is why the dua of the Prophet ﷺ was that, Oh Allah, protect me from above me, from beneath me, mm. from my side, mm. from in front of me, from behind me, from all angles. Because Allah Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal knows where evil is coming to you from. Mm. And that is something very profound. SubhanAllah. Yes. So in particular, um, tonight you have a talk coming up in Glasgow and you're going to discuss two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, two attributes specifically. Uh, what are those um, and why were they chosen? Allah is Al-Mujib and He is Al-Qareeb, which means He responds and He is close. Now, naturally, when we think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we think of Him being above, mm. very far from us, very distant from us. Mm. But He is also very close to us. And how is that? By simply saying, Ya Allah, you become extremely close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Placing your head on the ground, which is the lowest point, that you can put your forehead on takes you right up to the highest. And there's a beauty in that. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Rasulullah actually Rasulullah. says that you are the closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you are in sajda, when you are prostrating. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite being so far from us in his physical being, he is very close to us when it comes to responding. Mm to our du'as and our requests. Mm. Al-Mujib means he responds. Mm, okay. So there will always be a response from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should never think that he's not answering me. In fact, the hadith says that Allah is in that du'a so long as you say, so long as you do not say, da'awtu wa da'awtu falam yustajabli. That I made du'a and I made du'a so he did not respond to me. Mm. Don't say that. You should know and be sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to you. But it will come at a time where he knows it is best for you. Mm. One thing that we often get in our inbox is around this issue, right? People lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's answer. Yeah, everyone's going through their own problems these days. There's so many struggles, subhanAllah, especially in today's society, whether you're a youth, whether you're a parent, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, we have people telling us that, you know, they um, went through a trial and a tribulation um, and they've made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly, but they're not seeing a result. Now, whether it's they are not seeing the result or it hasn't come, or, you know, they haven't got the, the patience, I suppose, to, to um, or the, the, the tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will be answered. So I think in terms of people who, and that happens to me as well, let's not, let's not lie. What advice can you give then in terms of the, I suppose, the etiquette of making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, utilizing his names, yeah? Because of course there are, as we know, 99 attributes and you've mentioned two beautiful ones, subhanAllah. Do we use these in the dua? Do we use them depending on context and our situation? What advice do you have regarding that, inshallah? You know, sometimes we tend to treat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the manner that we treat our peers, human beings. So we think like you talk to a person and they will respond immediately. And if there's no response, you begin to ask, hey, why are you not responding? Why are you not answering? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works on his own timeline. He does what he wants, when he wants, how he wants to do it. And ultimately he knows when something is best for you. We don't know. Mm. So this is why you should have the real, like play, place real trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing 
that he knows when it is best for you. Mm. And submitting and sur- surrendering to this fact will actually bring you a lot of peace. Because when you call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't receive a response and you continue to call and call and call and you're not receiving a response, that dua that you're making will become so beloved to you that you will enjoy and want that dua more than you would actually want what you're asking for. Mm. And this is something that we, we tend to disregard. Yeah. A different angle then on this same kind of issue is not just the waiting for the answer, but the other part, other side of it is that many of us at times don't feel like we deserve to even raise our hands in the first place, right? People say we are sinners. Um, one of my close friends actually has said to me, I've not prayed for a long, long time. He wants to change his life. He knows the answer, right? Mm. But I think this idea that why start now? Um, If I haven't been praying to Allah, what are the chances of my du'as being answered? Is there even any point in me doing this and calling upon him? How would you respond to something like that? You know, there is no perfect time to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to turn back to Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. No matter what you've done, he himself says that, Oh, my dear servants who have transgressed the bounds, he's addressing you, you the one who's drank alcohol, you the one who's committed zina, you the one who's engaged in in all sorts of haram. He's addressing you. Do you know what he says? Does he say you're going to Jahannam? Does he say you're going to hellfire? No. He says, Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, what does shaitan want from you? Shaitan wants you to lose hope. He wants you to think that Allah will not forgive me. Allah will not have mercy upon me. Mm. So he wants you to reach your grave at the and and when you do, you shouldn't be under the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You should have never called out mm. to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no perfect time. In fact, even if you are in a pub and you're, you know, The bottle is at your lips. Mm. If your heart turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the right time. Mm. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. Allah wants you to turn back to him. We know the story of the man who's killed 99 people. He kills the hundredth person and he still has hope Mm. in the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ultimately, Allah forgives him. Mm. So really and truly, there is no... Uh, perfect time to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sure. Now's the time. Now's the time, alhamdulillah. So if somebody wants to learn more um, about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn uh, ways in which to call him, do you have advice on kind of, do you have certain uh, books that you recommend or actually we should plug perhaps you're doing your own series called The Lord of the Worlds. Um, what can you recommend as a good source to learn inshallah ta'ala? There's many, many, many books out there that will explain to you the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But generally we find them to be very, you know, into translation, for example. Like they, they uh, translatory, if that's, if that's right. Yeah. So basically they're translating the name. They're not giving you in-depth meaning to that name. Mm. Uh, and this is why I saw that there's a, a need for such a series. You know, we've got to explain the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what they truly mean. So, yeah, if you do want to watch my videos on YouTube, it, they are available. Uh, you can Google it basically and you'll find it, inshallah. Perfect. Uh, they are books in Arabic that have gone very in-depth into the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are some of the books that I've been relying on. But seeing as most of you viewership will probably be uh, listening in English and understanding in, uh, English, then I don't think it's ideal to go into the names, etc. of those books. Sheikh Zakallah here so much for giving us insight. A very small uh, drip in this ocean that is discussing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His Majesty and His names and attributes. And I want to say good luck, inshallah, for the rest of your tour. Now, we have got a bit of a surprise coming up, a surprise rapid fire round of questions, which our audience usually knows about and looks forward to. But before that, we have, inshallah, a quick break to talk about today's sponsor, which is Dean Over Dunya. Don't go anywhere. This episode is sponsored by Dean and Dunya, Scotland's Islamic lifestyle store, providing Scottish Muslims with unique products to help practice their faith. (laughs) 
All right, and welcome back to episode 40 with Sheikh Ibrahim Mink. Now it's time to put the pressure on. Okay, a bit of a rapid fire round of questions, inshallah. They're a bit random. Um, some are a bit more fun than others. Just answer as fast as you can, okay? So starting off pretty easy. Let's see. Favorite name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I think the favorite name is Allah. Okay. Yes. You're the second person this week to say that. Yes. <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, the simple reason is because this name includes all of the names. And when you say, uh, you know, Ar-Rahman is, you, you don't usually say Ar-Rahman is Allah or Ar-Rahim is Allah, Al-Ghafoor uh, is Allah. You'll say Allah is Al-Ghafoor, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Yes. It includes all of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. Okay. Favorite surah in the Quran? I don't have a favorite to be honest with you, but I Cur think uh, Surah Yusuf. Surah Yusuf. Yusuf, it's got so much insight. Mm. Yes. Mecca or Medina? Medina. Favorite Sahabi or Sahabiyat? Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab. If you make it to Jannah, inshallah, what's the first thing that you'd ask Allah for in Jannah when you get there? Subhanallah, a lot of people have uh, different things, but when you said that, the first thing that I thought of was, I want to fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. because... One of the questions is, if you could have a superpower, <laughs> what would it be to fly? Yeah, you know, you know now. Yeah, I've, I've always been obsessed with flying. So okay. I recently actually took a flight out just because I, I love, like we, we took off from one airport and landed at the same airport just because I love flying. <laughs> okay. So yeah, yeah, alhamdulillah. Okay. You know, they give you the controls and so it was pretty cool. Interesting. Okay, interesting. Right, if somebody was to buy you the perfect Eid gift, what would it be? I've never thought about this, to be honest with you. I have no idea. Good opportunity. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I have no idea, to be honest with you. Would That's you? my answer. Okay, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Um, okay, a bit of a controversial one here, okay. What is your biggest pet peeve that you see people doing in the masjid? Take notes, everyone. Mm. I think, yes, this, this is important. You know, people walk into the masjid and... You, you want to sit at the back, right at the back. Mm. And if I were to tell you, like if you walked into a marketplace and I told you, if you come up to the front, I'll give you a 70% discount. You'd walk up immediately, not realizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is offering you more. Mm. You walk into the masjid, you've got so much space in front of you, but you don't think of the fact that if only I take a few more steps, I'm higher up in Jannah. Mm. Why, why don't you want that? Allah is giving that to you. In fact, the hadith of the Prophet says that yes, they would have come to the masjid crawling if they knew what there was salah, you know, and they would have fought each what there was in salah, and they would have fought each other mm. for the first saf. You know, they would have literally fought each other to say, I, I was in this position, and the, the, the other guy would have been saying the same. Yeah. Yet you have that, and it's open, and nobody wants to go there. You know, there's, there's, something, there's something to that. I yeah. love how... Your complaint is not really a complaint. It's more like a frustration and you actually are looking out for people. I was expecting you to say, oh, people leave their shoes everywhere and people come smelling. But I love the the consideration for others. And it's so true. Just take a few more steps. Um, I've had to actually, during Joma, tell people to come forward. Mm. To be honest, more for health and safety reasons. But mm. <laughs> I understand. Um, you were going to say something? Yeah, I was, I was going to say that... Uh... I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> sure. What's the most interesting place that you've had to pray? I think the most inter interesting place I've prayed in is at Lake, Di Lake District here in, uh, in, in, in the UK. Mm -hmm. The reason being is I found a lot of peace there. You know, it was very quiet. I found a very, very, uh, you know, isolated spot. And I just felt connected being in nature at the same time as worshipping mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I love it. Alhamdulillah. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Summer or winter? Winter. If you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be? I have no idea. <laughs> You haven't got a favorite food? No, I just, I'm, I'm good with anything. To okay, with you. not fussy, mashallah. Um, which word or phrase are you guilty of saying the most? Uh, wow. 
I think wow. that's the word. Yeah, that's the wow. Word. Yeah, wow. <laughs> a lot of times, like if I'm uh, if I'm not comfortable in a situation, I'm like, oh wow, oh wow. And I'm like, yeah. okay. What are you saying, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's an amazement, but also like shock, right? Uh, not not really shock uh, <laughs> or amazement. I think it's more just to fill the gap. You know, okay. uh, if someone says something and you're not really tuned into what they're, oh wow, you know, <laughs> I don't know why it just comes out, man. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> okay, <laughs> maybe I should say wow. <laughs> yeah, when the episode yeah, comes yeah. out. Okay, early bird or night owl? Early bird. Mm. Um, okay, this is interesting. Okay, let me let me let me add on to that. that Bismillah. I enjoy being an early bird, but a lot of the times, like there's there's times in my life where I'm an early bird, and then there's times mm. where I just completely, like there's there's weeks on end where where I'll I'll, I'll sleep at one, two, three o'clock. Okay, I'm very jealous. I have to say. <laughs> okay, this one came from our team member Khawla actually, who is interested in knowing that if you were stuck on an island, well, who would you take with you if you had to be there forever? One person only. Don't I'm, say your wife. I'm married, so I can't <laughs> say anything else. No, Alhamdulillah, I'd love to say. I'd love to say my wife. Okay. Complete the sentence. The one thing that I can't live without is Islam. I think. Yeah. Your deen, your faith. Yeah. Okay. Choose between the following. Okay, so which would you rather? A, be caught in public with your foot in the sink doing wudu. Or B, have your phone go off in the middle of the masjid in salah with a really embarrassing ringtone. B. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind actually putting my foot into a sink. Oh, so you mean, okay. Oh, sorry. A, a. Did I say, did I say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say the uncles would come after you. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, they would. <laughs> Okay, yeah. do you have advice for others? What's the best advice you can give? Be yourself. I think that's very important in this world because mm. a lot of people want, like, you end up being superficial mm. uh, with people. You want to you want to put up a front. Mm. But in reality, like, being original and being who you are uh, means there's a lot of diversity out there. You, do, you don't want to just aspire to be another human being or another person. Yes, it's fine to have a role model, but at the same time, you, you, you want to be yourself. Mm. You know, your flavor should come out, basically. Yeah. Good advice. I like that. Yeah. What is the number one thing that you want to be remembered for, your legacy? I think I'd like, uh, I think I'd like for people to listen to that which will benefit me in my grave, you know, that which I've done in this dunya that will benefit me in my grave mm. after after I die. Sometimes, uh, maybe I shouldn't be saying this, but subhanAllah, I, I make a dua that Allah makes uh, that which I've done on earth of goodness. Mm. He makes it more prominent after I die. So I don't get to see and, and enjoy the benefit in this world from fame, etc. But uh, mm. enjoy the benefit in the akhirah. Okay, and last one, who is your deen inspiration? Who uh, inspires you the most? It could be someone who's alive currently or someone who's passed away. I think my uncle, I can't, uh, I can't put it uh, beyond that. It's my uncle is uh, Mufti. So to be honest with you, we grew up, you know, seeing him as a role model, mm. seeing him as a person that uh, we'd aspire to. Although uh, in reality, we've become very, very different, you know, uh, in nature, I think. I think a lot of people see us to be similar, okay. but I see myself as being uh, a different person in nature. Sure. Uh, but he inspired me to be who I am, to follow the path that I have followed. Mm. I mean, you said that you look similar. As you must get it a lot. The similarities are there. But I love your answer before of, you know, be who you are. Yes. Um, and that's the most important thing. But it's yes. so good to know that you have that strong connection there, subhanAllah. Um, and a very blessed family to have uh, your uncle. You learn with your grandfather as well, right? Yes. Um, and to have that that the generations all studying together is something very very special Sheikh thank you so much for being on the show today um, we do have one more thing for you and that is a gift actually a little gift box from today's sponsor which is Dean Overdunia thank you so much um, in here we have a selection of actually I'll let you open and we'll explain what it is all right so in here we have a really um, like premium uh, miswak which they have wow. developed um, the brand there. Um, I think it has, has a bit of flavour in it as well. And the purpose behind it is to revive um, the sunnah of the Prophet which is 
uh, to of course be clean and to use that as well and yeah. hopefully a smell that will make you smell nice Since, for, yeah, yeah, for the rest of your tour inshallah, inshallah. but um, until then uh, inshallah until next time uh, we hope to see you again good luck with the rest of the tour Same and I hope that here. Scotland treats you better in terms of weather as well mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but until then Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh jazakallahu khairan Thank you ever so much everyone for tuning in to episode 40 of the Inspiration Podcast show. Don't forget already, if you haven't, please do comment, like and subscribe to our channel. We have many more videos like this coming up. And if you prefer listening on audio, our podcast is available also on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud and all of your favourite apps. Until next time, I've been Osman. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. When Brother Sajjad invited me to the first Scottish annual conference, I came here and it was not as big as it is today. So subhanAllah, it's grown a lot in the last three years. And I believe it's a cause that is worth supporting. It's a cause worth helping because it will help the Muslim Ummah generally at large. When we support each other, the Muslim Ummah strengthens altogether. So I encourage you to all support the Scottish Annual Conference. Barakallahu feekum. That's a message from your brother Ibrahim Mink. Amazing. Good to go? Yes. Alhamdulillah. <laughs>